All right, you can buy great centerpieces, but making one yourself really adds that personal touch. And you don't have to be a pro to put it together. Something nice can actually happen mm -hmm. when you're DIYing it yourself. Jackie Wofford of Alice's Table walks us through the process. So this centerpiece will be center stage at our Thanksgiving table, but it's not done yet. So I see some beautiful roses there. How do we prep them? Well, we've got to go over and select our roses. What we're gonna do first is we are gonna strip all the leaves off, take off the guard petal and kind of pull it open. And then if you blow in them, see how open they are? Oh, tips and tricks of the trade. My goodness. That's right. And then you kind of then cut you're gonna it quite kind short of lift there. for a hole. Yes, because you want it to kind of slide in. This particular stem has several guard roses on it. You're always gonna cut at an angle and that's gonna expose the bottom of the stem to absorb more water. Oh, that's amazing. So I'm just going to fan out the petals and kind of blow in. Exactly. And there, it's a lot more open. And then it's not yeah. like we're ever gonna run into a situation where a rose doesn't open, because that's so disappointing. It is so disappointing. We're at the point, first what we did is we greened up the arrangement. Mm -hmm. We put in the base of our greenery, and then we added our primary flowers. Those are, are the big flowers. Yes, exactly, okay. that are gonna take the most room. Succulents, of course, are big. And as you can mm -hmm. see, we have a couple succulents in the arrangement. Yeah. Is this a real pumpkin? It is a real pumpkin. Wow. So now that you've prepped it, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna cut it in an angle. Okay. And we'll go ahead and cut this one as well. And again, you're just gonna kind of look for where. I just placed mine to the back because I love how that red went with the sunflower. That was perfect. You've got a great eye for this. And what was this tape used for, just to help it? The tape was used to tape down the oasis. So we're about out of time, but what we would normally do is this is where we would take our moss, mm -hmm. and we're just gonna kinda tuck it in, hot glue it. Oh, how beautiful and is that? And cover up the tape. A pumpkin with moss and real flowers at the top. Absolutely gorgeous. You did a great job. Well, in just a bit, she'll show us how to set a tablescape for Thanksgiving or Friendsgiving. Well, next, now back to our Thanksgiving table. Let's add in some foliage to the mix along with the fall fabric haul. Jackie Wilford shows us how texture works to our advantage when setting a table this Thanksgiving. Let's talk about these gorgeous colors and fabrics. How did you select them? I always encourage everybody to use things that you have at home. Um, this little tablecloth, base tablecloth, we ordered off of Amazon. Mm -hmm. This runner is a great runner and it's it reversible. It's from Target. So you don't have to spend a lot of money. You just need to create contrast use and your details. So exactly. That's something I love too because Let's really talk to this napkin. And then also going the extra mile, going to the last detail. So the napkin I loved, um, this is just a typical copper napkin ring that anyone has at home. But this is a live plant here, right but here. It's a succulent. Yeah. Again, succulents are so big this year. And great thing about it is after Thanksgiving, you can take this and put it in water and it'll root and plant it again. Oh, wonderful. So We're a little empty here though. Let's get to add something. We are empty. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna start with, I love this. Be a secret about this. Okay. I got all of these. Listen up. At Trader Joe's. Wow. So they sell Trader different Joe's. packages of greenery for $2.99 each. And it's super easy. Anyone can do it. This is so beautiful. And of course- Isn't it so pretty? It wouldn't be Thanksgiving without throwing in some gourds and some pumpkins, right? Exactly. So we're gonna use this. This is just, again, your magnolia leaves to cover up your stems. Okay. And then this is just a gourd. Again, wow. all natural, super easy. And then this is a little real pumpkin. Beautiful. That we just added the moss and the succulents for a finishing touch. Wow. So that Matches just the same right process there. as the centerpiece. Exactly. Okay. It just goes right there. So see how quick and easy that was? Yeah. And how do we finalize this? Because you've invited me to your table, but we need to get you set too. That's right. We need to have some dishes. Beautiful. And you put those on last just so nothing gets knocked over? Exactly. The last thing that we're going to add is the wine glass right here in your water glass. And ta-da. 
You've gotten to get together with friends, make a beautiful arrangement, and you are ready for company. Well, personal opinion there, that was a lot of artistry. Now another hack would be sneaking in some candles or just little flameless ones. In the next half an hour, we tap into those turkey day entertaining tips. Welcome back. So we all want to host amazing Thanksgiving and Friendsgiving mm -hmm. feasts, but the meal is not just about the food. Okay. It's also about the fellowship. That's right. And as uh, you, as the host, you set the atmosphere, so it's good time to brush up on your entertaining tips. Jenna Phillips from The Fontaine shows easy ways to keep your Thanksgiving fun and festive. First up, Thanksgiving, who really should get the invite for either like a lunchtime or a dinner meal? Yeah, so I think it's really important to have all of your family members at a Thanksgiving meal. Um, what's becoming really popular, of course, is Friendsgiving, where we invite yes. all of our friends and loved ones. Um, but there's also nothing wrong with, for actual Thanksgiving dinner, kind of including everybody in that. So if you have a friend who is going to be maybe alone for the holidays or um, you know a coworker who is from out of town, invite them to your Thanksgiving depending on you know how formal your family dinner is and it really makes everybody feel included for the holiday. Sometimes this is a big question for people who have plus ones or children and then they show up, maybe you don't have enough seating. So how do you handle the invite? Just make sure to ask, ask your um, attendees, you know, how many people they're bringing, if they're bringing their children, if they're bringing their significant other, that way you have a really good guest count and you really kind of know how to anticipate who's going to be there. Okay, do you have any prep tips or even in the planning stage of when you set the dinner for? Yeah, I would say if you know that, you know, you're not a super morning yeah. person, <laughs> I <Guilty>. would <laughs> I would definitely kind of aim for a later in the afternoon dinner. One of my favorite, favorite dinner times for a holiday is going to be that two or three o'clock hour. Mm -hmm. It gives everybody time to plan and prepare and kind of maximize your day and also it's such a big meal you don't really need to eat that many times in the day yeah. you know <laughs> no perfect okay and we are looking at this absolutely gorgeous tablescape one thing I've noticed we're not seeing name cards here. Now, yes. do you have a tip for that? I do, yes. Yeah. So what we always love is name tags are so great. Mm -hmm. They're such a cute addition to any tablescape, but we always like to have people choose. So having them kind of on a separate area, maybe a little side table or something, having them find their name card and sit with whoever they want. It kind of opens up the table and really includes everybody so they have a choice in where they get to sit at the Thanksgiving table. Okay, and then what about a gift? You know. Do you think you bring a gift? Do you think it's a bottle of wine? What do you think? Yeah, I think it's always very appropriate and kind, even if you know they tell you you don't need to bring anything. Bring a hostess gift. Bring um, flowers that are already in a vase so that the hostess doesn't have to worry about finding something for mm -hmm. them. Um, maybe a nice bottle of wine or you know something that you know that the hostess really likes. Just a little gift to kind of thank your hostess for setting them up and having a great meal together. Okay, and something else that's really fun to do, just adding in a game element, because mm -hmm. if some people don't know each other, it's a great way to break the ice. Oh yeah, definitely. Like where you put the, the, the name of the famous person on your back and you have to figure out who you are. That's yeah, or Mad Libs, something yes. simple, whatever. Mad Libs is good. Uh, one of the things, <laughs> uh, what I first thought about when I saw the initial tablescape that she had done there is she had the big wine glasses. And I remember as a kid, that's like the day my folks would break out the fine china and everything. And we yep. would, I mean, they'd give us kids to, to be able to drink out of like the, the nice goblet glass or whatever. I thought that was a big deal back in the day. Yeah, you get the crystal out for mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, Christmas, all of these holidays that we have coming right up. That's right. We gave the kids the plastic ones. They didn't get the crystal <laughs> anymore. So, 